In this video, I'm going to answer the age-old question, how do you get Max to swing? I might even make a drum machine in the process, so let's see if I can do this in one take. If I'm making a drum machine in Max, I like to use the uh, live.grid object. It's a very high-level object, but it's rewarding to use. We're going to set up some parameters for this live grid to make it more suitable for a drum machine. Um, we don't need to see this directions panel, so I'm going to go into the inspector, hit command I to bring up the inspector, and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I get that away. And then this is not suitable for a drum machine because only one um, column is active at any time, and I want to enable matrix mode, which will turn it into like this kind of free form. I can have as many cells selected on any column as I want. Okay, so what we would typically do with this is we would address this with a counter. So I'm going to count from 1 to 16 to represent the 16 columns. <clears throat> and if I send a bang into this counter, then it's going to increment the wiper here. So that goes logically across. And in order to get this to run by itself, I'm going to use a metro. I think we should turn caps lock off. Metro, and we'll use a beat relative unit, so like uh, just eighth notes, I guess, is fine. And then I'll use a toggle to turn that on. All right, so if I turn this on, then that wiper should like march across the screen. Now I want to get uh, the data out of this live grid object into a virtual instrument, so I think battery would be appropriate. So I'm going to add a battery and drop this into my patcher. So the output of this battery, I can't just take the output of this live grid and throw it into the battery. Battery does not understand, or rather the VST tilde object that's hosting the battery will not understand what the data is that's coming out of this live grid object. So let's fill this with some test data. So I'll drop in some notes here. These are going to be like hi-hats. And what I want to do is I want to look at the output of this as it's running. So <clears throat> what I can see here is I'm getting a list that corresponds to the number of the rows that are being addressed. And we're going to use these numbers to create MIDI note numbers. Now um, most drum machines start at C1, which is three octaves up. So uh, if this column is, if this uh, row is one, that means that I would need to add 35 to it because three octaves would be 36 plus um, plus one would be 36. So now I can't plug this directly into here because we saw earlier that we have a list coming out and this add object only knows how to deal with integers. So if I get a list, I want to break it up into individual uh, integers and I'm going to do the, that with the iter object. I'm going to hold down the shift key and just drop that in there like that. It's a quick little max tip that I appreciate. Uh, so now that I have an integer, I can use a make note object to actually generate the note on and off messages. Um, Actually, it's not generating note on and off messages. It's just generating a, a packed list that represents the note on and note offs. Um, to generate the MIDI messages, which this battery needs to understand, I need to first pack this together in a list. So now I have pitch and velocity as one list. And then I'm going to format this list, finally, as MIDI messages with the MIDI format object. <clears throat> now here's the fun part, because uh, this outlet would be raw MIDI bytes that's coming out of the, the bottom of the MIDI format. But I need to not send raw MIDI bytes to this VST tilde object. I need to send objects that are formatted in a way that the object understands to pass the MIDI down. So I will take this output, which is designed explicitly for this purpose, and this I can plug directly into the battery object. Um, this is producing audio, so I need to turn on my audio engine and then add a DAC to the bottom of the output of the battery. And let's add a kit. So I open up battery and I'm going to use this 909 because, you know, it's a 909. And let's see if that works. So inspiring. Okay. So uh, I now have my drum machine. And the problem is this Metro object does not have any sort of ability to swing the notes. And this is what this video is ostensibly about, not making a drum machine. So um, <clears throat> there's lots of ways to do swing in Max. I'm going to show you my quick little recipe. Uh, to do it, I'm going to use a phaser. 
So I'll say phaser, and I'm going to lock this to beat relative units. So phaser at eighth notes, and then I'm going to use that lock attribute. Turn that on so uh, it'll be locked to global transport. And the output of the phaser is going to look like this. If I use a live.scope, uh, we can look at the output of the phaser, and it looks like a rising unipolar positive sawtooth. And to create swing, uh, I'm just going to say, hey, listen, can you? if the number is less than uh, 0.5, because the number, is going, the number is going from 0 to 1, that's the output of the phaser. So 0.5 would be like the halfway mark. And this should produce uh, 16th notes uh, on the output. So if we look at this, and if I send this to the scope, we can see kind of a square wave happening. And I'm going to go ahead and add a, a, a number box here so we can adjust this. But um, because this is an audio signal, and ultimately I want to produce a bang, I'm going to use an edge object. And this is just going to look at the, the leading and tailing edge of this waveform that I have and produce a bang on either one. So that's what these two outputs are. So instead of this metro, which I'm going to get rid of, I'll throw this edge in here. OK, so now we have the same thing as we had before. Uh, and I can start and stop global transport, and it'll, it'll work. Um, but now we have the ability to influence or steal um, this eighth note. So we can have part of it a little bit faster or a little bit slower than the next eighth note by just changing the value of this less than. So let's see if we can get some swing here. So there you have it. That was pretty easy. Um, so now you have a quick and, quick and easy recipe to produce swing and max, and uh, that didn't take any time whatsoever. So I hope this is helpful. If it is, uh, let me know in the comments.